All right, so today I'm going to help you set up BAML with Python and give you a quick tutorial on how to go do this. The first thing we'll do is we'll create a quick Python project from scratch. Awesome, and we'll initialize this using Poetry, which is just a package management system for Python, but you can use anything you want, including pip or vm or anything else directly. So at this point, we have a Python set up. Let's go ahead and open our virtual environment. We open a virtual environment. Let's go ahead and open this in VS Code so we can do more things. For the rest of this demo, I'll do all this in VS Code just to show you a complete example of what it looks like. So let's just make a quick Python file, main.py, and print hello world, your project. Uh, now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and add some basic starter BAML files to your project. Awesome. Now that we've added the BAML project, you'll notice the BAML SRC folder pops in. The BAML SRC folder include a file called clients, generators.baml, which you can modify anytime you want to change what sort of client you want to use, whether you want to use the async or the sync version, and also update the version so that your VS Code extension stays in sync with your Python library. Now the first thing that you'll notice when you have a BAML function is that you have, um, when you have a BAML file, is that you can write functions in BAML. BAML functions are very simplistic. They have a name, they have parameters, and you can have multiple parameters that you pass in at any point, and then they have a return type. A BAML return type can be any type. It can be a basic type, like a string, or um, an array, or something else. But it can also be a class. In this case, this extract resume is going to take in a string and then output a resume. You can then go ahead and set uh, clients in BAML, where you can actually define exactly what model you're using. In this case, we're using GPT-40, but why don't we go ahead and set that to GPT-40 mini? And lastly, you can have a prompt at your setting side. So you'll notice that I'm changing around this prompt and I'm going to go do things. CTX.output format is a special thing that'll help output the format for the return type of the function into the prompt itself. But let's go ahead and quickly see what this prompt actually does. You can actually open the VS Code Playground and you'll be able to see the entire prompt as rendered as directly sent to the model. Additionally, you'll be able to see the raw web request that BAML actually makes. You can see tokens that the BAML, BAML makes available. And lastly, you can also set environment variables for any API keys and such you might need, which might include Google or Anthropic, OpenAI, or anything else you use across the system. Once you define tests in BAML, which can be done like this, um, where the test takes the function, the name of the test, the function that it applies to, and then any parameters of that function will be outlined right here. So once you've done this, you can actually go ahead and run these tests directly in BAML. And as long as your API keys are correct, you'll be guaranteed to get outputs out of BAML that match the exact response type of the format. Now, if for some reason you don't out add CTX at Apple format, you may see an error like this where we're unable to ma uh, parse the data. That's because the model, nowhere in the prompt, actually explains what the resume data type is. So if you ever see that, just make sure you have included CTX at output format somewhere in your prompt. Um, if you want to do a user system role, you can go ahead and go do this. Dot role user. So this will break the prompt into a system prompt and a user prompt automatically for you. And once again, you can go run this and you can see that it is working as we'd expect. Now, as you go forward, you're gonna find a couple more things that you may want to do. You may want to figure out how do I set temperature or other parameters as part of these clients. Well, that's why this clients.baml file exists. It's to show you an example. In this case, GPT-40 mini, and I can actually, actually just pass in the temperature variable and this will set it to temperature zero. And then I can just use this client in my function and go set that up and uh, we'll fix that. But as you can see over here, that the playground actually renders and now I'm using GPT-40 mini client. When you go do this, you can actually see that this temperature is being set to zero. Now I'm gonna change my OpenAI environment variables so you don't see my keys. Um, And I'll show you exactly. Um, now what you can do over here is you can actually set your, now I'll show you what this web request looks like for temperature. 
notice that temperature will actually get passed into the web request right over here. These are just pass. What you saw in client.baml is just a pass-through parameter that any parameters you pass into here will just get passed through into the model as part of the web request. What we recommend is make sure you read our docs for each of the providers to know which parameters are pass-through parameters versus like model or API key, which are not. Now, let's continue and see a couple more things. The next thing to look at is how can you use BAML in Python code? Well, the first things first is that you'll notice that we now have a BAML client folder. BAM, the BAML client folder is just a generated code that interfaces your BAML code with your Python code. Let's take a look at how one would use a BAML client. You would do from BAML client import B And let's actually put all of this inside a folder really fast. Uh, cool. So we'll do from BAML client import B. And then all you have to do is you can see B dot extract resume is a function that is now available. Now, when I call this function, this function will magically call the LLM kind of like your test cases do and will keep your data types in sync. So that means resume.experience will always be a list of strings. Now, if I open my BAML code and I change this to, let's say, um, I want my email to also be a string array, watch what happens to email. It'll automatically be a list of strings. And you can just expect that your BAML types will stay perfectly in sync with your other types. So if, if we go ahead and now break down the problem and go ahead and change this problem to this, once again, you'll notice experiences now a list of experiences. So we'll construct data types for all your types in BAML for equivalent Python types or Pydantic models. Now, if you decide to go streaming, you can also go like this. Stream equal b dot stream dot extract resume and then for partial and stream you'll notice the same thing uh, partial whenever partial dot name for example will always be an optional uh, version of the resume data type completely type safe without you having to think about it uh, and if you ever want the final response resume equals stream dot get final response and now you'll notice that this is going to be a completed resume type or resume dot name will be the full data model that you would normally get from here now you may want to do some async programming so you can do this as well um, and similarly you would get a similar kind of chunk over here async def wrapper I know it's now over here this becomes an async for wait loop and similarly it will be the same thing for waiting for the final resume type if you're ever waiting for the partial resume type you can do the same thing resume equals await p.async resume and again this will be an async version of this of the same library that you were exposing before. Um, I believe that's all you should need to get started. If you run into any questions or roadblocks definitely join our discord and ask for help over there. We'll do our best to stay up to speed. Thank you.